See, my dad, he was a Baptist minister. Those guys are like fiery. One time I saw my dad do like a full handstand and walk across the backs of the chairs. You know, this is like the Holy Spirit hitting them. And I was like, whoa. You know, and I broke out crying. I saw the ladies screaming. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, my mother, when we got home, it's like, that's what you call the spirit. And when the spirit hits people, sometimes they cry, sometimes they do um, things that you don't understand, okay? But what they're happy about is the fact that they have salvation. Whoa, whoa, revelations -y. Whoa, whoa, revelation Z. If you looked in the sky, see the legion of angels, tell me what you then believe. And after all this time, Sitting there still and would you pray for forgiveness on Revelation Z? Well, look around you now, this is Revelation Z. Well, look around you now, this is Destruction Z. In Detroit in the 70s uh, with my two brothers, David and Dennis, we started a band. We had this great new rock and roll sound and we needed a, a name. And David, our brother, came up with the name Death. It wasn't like a, a bad cult death type thing, it was a spiritual death. Because we, when we talked to the guy in the first club, he says, man, I love the music. I love the music. And, um, you know, and I know he's going to get around to that proverbial question. And he's like, well, what's the name of you guys? You know, I put my head down because I knew what I was going to get. And David stood up and said, death. And that guy, I mean, his facial expression changed and he said, nobody is going to come in this club and watch a band called Death. You know, and, you know, we, we kind of got down and out. 1976, you know, we were flat broke. Now, we just began to sell equipment and everything just to pay off bills that we had. And after we did that, we was left with, then we had no contract, no car, no equipment. You know, we couldn't even book ourselves if we want to. We had a, a distant relative who lived here in New England. He says, why don't you come to New England with me and, uh, you know, just clear your head for a couple of weeks. So we came up here, and bear in mind, I mean, when we got here, we had what we had. We had the pants we had, the shirt we had, and there was no bags or nothing. And man, the minute I saw those majestic mountains, a spiritual feeling came over me. That seems to be my pivotal year. That's the year that I really got serious about, okay, what is the Bible? What is this all about? What is the questions of life? Why am I alive? Where am I going? Where am I going to end up? David and I sit down and wrote a series of songs, you know, based on all this new, wonderful new knowledge we were getting from the Bible and from our spiritual conversations. And, and we came up with these songs uh, for the fourth movement. Uh, and we recorded them at a place called Starbuck Recording Studio in Burlington. It was a 16-track recording studio. 
and um, he had some some wonderful equipment. The recordings were they were atmospheric. We would pray before we go in there and say, "Give us a good session." And sometimes, you know, when you look around, you see other people say, "Where are they going with this? Where are they going with this?" You can see the question on other people's faces. But David was like on fire at all these sessions. You know, he had the energy, just like he knew something nobody else knew. Always at your door. The recording the fourth movement didn't really feel that much different from death. What did feel different is the, you know, just the, the vibe of the whole album and, and what we were doing. Just the powerful belief that, uh, that we, were, we were making the right music, that we were doing the right thing. It was due to that spirit that exciting spirit that we had when we had discovered this, just this wonderful new phase of our lives. And things started to make sense to us. You know, why we're gonna get older, uh, why all the loved ones, you know, before us are gonna be gone by the time we get to be their age. All these questions that we have, you know, uh, a lot of people don't like to ask those questions throughout life. They just let them happen. And that's what the fourth movement was all about. And that's what David's concept was. And we embraced it, and I embraced it, and, you know, and we all became architects of that. We helped to build it. And, uh, you know, we put them out. We put out only a thousand of those records. Something I never thought would hit anybody's market. Because as bad as we were getting talked about as death, and you imagine, uh, okay, our next record is going to be a record called The Fourth Movement and, uh, you know, it's the gospel too. We tried uh, uh, putting it in record shops. We even had a billboard uh, with taxis, you know, but really the main audience uh, in David's mind, and we all kind of got on board with this and, and I think we all felt it, is that the Fourth Movement music was really for a one audience. And the one audience was God himself. David always believed that the death and the fourth movement music would, he, he, he went to his grave. He literally went to the next life with the strong belief that this music would one day be heard. When he died, it was almost like that same feeling. It's like he's gone to this place and he's waiting on us to get there. Okay, we're all gonna die. All the ones you love are gonna die, you know, in this realm. But that doesn't mean that they're gone. It just means that they've passed on to that next level. <laughs> I think me and Dennis even had a conversation one time where we said, hey, when we, get, when, we, when we meet up with David, we'll be able to play this music freely. David said that was the ultimate chip. I don't care how high you get, you ain't gonna find no chip more ultimate than that. <laughs> and I've been on all of them. <laughs> okay, but that is the ultimate chip. But what comes after that is the, is, is the, is the eternal chip. In our lives we've seen a whole lot of sorrow.